Watch your six actual. Target is in the main house. You have execute authority. Even when stacked against the large and looming shadow of Activision's Call of Duty, Electronic Arts and developer DICE always position Battlefield as the cream of the crop for first-person military shooters. Few would disagree the franchise's penchant for hosting massive battles and dropping players into hectic, vehicle-involved encounters set a precedent hardly rivaled. However, Battlefield 5 tested such thinking, launching in November 2018 to reviews that labeled it messy, unpolished, and technically unsound. The World War II set experience found better footing years later, but by that time, series faithful had cast their gaze toward the next major outing, Battlefield 2042. To a degree, the futuristic Battlefield aimed to abandon and magnify the brand's core tenets, parting ways with the usual class system in favor of introducing specialists. Mainstay features such as the scoreboard also took a backseat at launch in late 2021. DICE further eschewed tradition by not developing a single-player campaign to focus its efforts on building a live service. Unfortunately, 2042 arrived in a disastrous state, plagued with issues that would result in its categorization as the worst launch in brand history. But after eating crow for months on end, Battlefield 2042's developers eventually managed to improve upon the base game. Some wondered whether such change came too late, given that amid all the turbulence, EA shared its intention of overhauling the property with new leadership at the helm. The maligned 2021 entry could thus mark the end of an era. This is the tragedy of Battlefield 2042. This video has been brought to you in part by Wanted Dead. Ever long for the days when 80s action movies were all the rage? Well, reminisce no more because Wanted Dead is a game that exists and lets you experience what it's like to be Arnie in Commando or Rambo in, wait for it, Rambo. But now as a woman who has a katana, a cybernetic arm, and questionable karaoke skills. Wanted Dead is the first title from the fresh-faced publisher 110 Industries and is a love letter to the beloved classics of the PS3 and Xbox 360 era. Offering 8 to 10 hours of action-packed kick-ass fun with over 50 stylish finishing animations, unique boss encounters, and an amazing hack-and-slash gun-fu combat system, Wanted Dead is unlike anything else out there. Act now and you can get Wanted Dead at an impressive discount of up to 50%. The game is available on PC via Steam and Epic Game Stores, as well as the PS4 and 5, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One. The sale will end on September 4th on Steam, September 5th on Xbox, and September 13th on PlayStation. So hurry up and use our link in the description or in the pinned comment to buy Wanted Dead with this amazing discount and you'll get an experience you definitely won't forget. We'd like to thank Wanted Dead for sponsoring this video. Following the announcements of final updates for Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Battlefield 5, EA and DICE issued a statement to IGN outlining the studio's long-term plans, which revolved around production on a new Battlefield set for release in 2021. The April 2020 statement constituted ground zero for months of insider leaks and speculation about the future of EA's flagship shooter. Rumors billed the title, informally referred to as Battlefield 6, as a mammoth-sized experience whose expansive maps would hold 128 players. EA CEO Andrew Wilson later added fuel to the fire, boasting in a November 2020 earnings call of the game's never-before-seen scale. The executive additionally insisted PlayStation and Xbox's next-gen hardware was helping DICE fully realize its next-gen vision, and that internal playtesting had yielded very positive feedback. Those familiar with the development cycle would later assert that Wilson's comments were far from a representation of reality. 
A distinct lack of creative freedom drove well over a dozen senior developers away from DICE during Battlefield V's production. Many of these veterans had devoted more than a decade of their careers to the franchise. Yet EA often dismissed their proposals on how to advance Battlefield forward, instead following the path laid by rival shooters. Since Battle Royale had taken the industry by storm, EA set its sights on a Battlefield version of the mode popularized by Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, hence the inception of Firestorm. This particular Battlefield V mode fought an uphill battle from the outset. After all, the main game's relatively lackluster sales guaranteed a limited player base for Firestorm. Plus, the absence of several series experts meant the Battle Royale wouldn't likely reach its full potential. Regardless, EA longed for a piece of the pie that PUBG, Fortnite, and Call of Duty's Blackout offerings so enjoyed. Respawn Entertainment's then-work-in-progress Apex Legends showed promise, but there was no assuring its success, especially since the studio actively pursued the free-to-play route. At the time, then, Battlefield still seemed the publisher's best bet at breaking ground in the Battle Royale space. Firestorm remained a priority, but a full-blown Battlefield Battle Royale eventually occupied center stage, with EA reportedly advising DICE to mimic the genre's most popular gameplay design choices. Speaking with industry insider Tom Henderson, former developers stated this embryonic phase of development spawned some of 2042's features, including the plus menu and call-in tablets for vehicles. Whatever trepidations developers may have felt about the franchise's new direction were further compounded by the aging Frostbite technology. A 2016 version of the engine powered Battlefield V, which simply wouldn't suffice considering the Battle Royale's planned feature set. But because so many of Frostbite's system designers had departed the studio, an upgrade was easier said than done. All told, production on what would become 2042 lasted for three years, 18 months of which were spent on overhauling Frostbite. According to Henderson's sources, general work on the project persisted throughout 2019, the controversial decision to shed the class system for specialists not taking root until early 2020. The player base's investment in Apex Legends' distinct characters inspired the choice. So too did the billions Activision had raked in from Call of Duty microtransactions. That loot boxes were coming under fire from governments around the world also reinforced EA's interest in alternative revenue streams. Amid these changes, DICE staffers found themselves facing the challenge of working from home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Integrating Frostbite upgrades presented several more obstacles under these circumstances, as most developers didn't have the equipment necessary to work remotely. A hardware leasing system helped in many respects, yet progress hit additional roadblocks given the sheer amount of data employees were required to download on a daily basis. Reportedly, the studio's less experienced developers especially struggled during this period, missing out on hands-on experience which culminated in a logistical nightmare for senior staff who had to guide them along from afar. The biggest shift for the new battlefield manifested between the months of April and August 2020, wherein it pivoted from a battle royale epic to a standard DICE experience. Tom Henderson's reporting cited Call of Duty Warzone's release and subsequent success as a major motivating factor. Massive maps, 128 player matches, and a doubling down on the specialist system became the name of the game, while the Battle Royale conceit ostensibly inspired the final product's Hazard Zone mode. Notably, the project entered full production in August 2020, just as DICE was putting the finishing touches on the drastic conceptual leap. That left the team with 15 months to build a next-gen battlefield, making the EA CEO's February 2021 statements about the title being way ahead of schedule a misrepresentation of the facts. Allegedly, his comments originated from assumptions made by inexperienced DICE leads. By this point, though, higher-ups at least recognized the need for extra help, resulting in EA's supposedly unprecedented decision to pull burnout creator Criterion from Need for Speed and shift those resources to Battlefield 2042. Interestingly enough, EA had already assembled Battlefield's biggest development team to date, comprising DICE, its LA satellite, Criterion, and former Need for Speed studio EA Gothenburg. DICE general manager Oscar Gabrielson divulged in a blog update that while Criterion and the LA crew helped the main office fulfill a shared vision for the game, EA Gothenburg assumed the task of taking the technology to the next level. In due course, DICE LA, later renamed Ripple Effect, revealed its creation of Battlefield Portal, a player-driven game mode wherein users could build content based on 2042 and older entries, namely 1942, Bad Company 2, and Battlefield 3. 
Gabrielson's write-up further teased the title's epic scale, promising a first-person shooter packed with everything people loved about Battlefield while amplifying it to a completely different degree. And at the center of it all sat all-out military warfare and game-changing levels of destruction. DICE expounded on these ideas upon formally unveiling Battlefield 2042 in June 2021. Venturing far from the historical settings of more recent installments, the next Battlefield drop players 20 years into the future. As opposed to exploring the backdrop in a single-player campaign, a multiplayer-only experience fueled the endeavor, supporting 128 users on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X s Meanwhile, the PS4 and Xbox One versions would host up to 64 players. AI bots rounded out the numbers for solo and squad play. According to design director Daniel Berlin, foregoing a traditional story mode constituted DICE's way of leaning into what it did best, massive battlefields and massive multiplayer experiences. But even in the absence of a campaign, the developer told Eurogamer that Battlefield 2042 emphasized a distinct narrative-driven context that hinged on a climate change-induced humanitarian crisis. The world of 2042 followed the notion of a climate apocalypse to an endpoint wherein several nations became destabilized, thus resulting in an unparalleled refugee crisis that culminates in displaced persons enlisted by the United States or Russia to fight another world war. Replacing Battlefield's typical class system, refugees adopted the title of non-patriated and served as the shooter's specialists, each of whom wielded unique abilities and character traits. Specialists also provided the lens through which players perceived the events of the so-called narrative-driven world. Battlefield 2042's initial reveal only confirmed select details, outlining the conquest and breakthrough modes, yet withholding specifics about the squad-based Hazard Zone mode for an EA Play showcase the following month. Information regarding the then-unannounced Battlefield Portal similarly remained under wraps. But DICE wasted no time clarifying that Battle Royale gameplay wasn't on the cards, despite the mode's increasing popularity among the competition. In a sense, then, the developers did well to set expectations early on, thereby letting the marketing in the months leading up to release hammer home the strengths 2042 did possess. Of course, the larger-than-usual maps were the biggest draw, and to preemptively mitigate the concerns of anyone who thought the spaciousness too overwhelming, Berlin guaranteed the team had implemented design pillars to ensure players always clustered toward locations packed with other people. Plus, DICE brought back the concept of Levolution from Battlefield 4 and Hardline, in which destructive events significantly changed a map's landscape and, by proxy, shifted the course of battle. The developers additionally claimed extreme weather incidents like sandstorms could alter match dynamics in equal fashion. Fortunately for fans, the wait to see how such promises played out did not last for long. No! So today we're talking about Battlefield 2042 getting hit with a delay. Can you believe Battlefield 2042 was delayed a month? Um, but it seems like Battlefield 2042 is either being pushed back to later this year or more likely 2022. Yes, everyone is kind of been losing their minds this morning because... Akin to several other video games produced during the same time frame, Battlefield 2042's release got postponed weeks ahead of its initially planned launch. Complications stemming from the work-from-home mandate induced by the coronavirus pandemic forced the multiplayer-only shooter out of its October 2021 due date and into a mid-November slot. DICE assured the prolonged production necessitated a mere polishing job and didn't require an overhaul by any measure. Still, Electronic Arts and DICE made plenty of room for an open beta session in early October. Impressions among critics and players generally recognized the title's potential, though few could ignore the grim omen laid bare by its astounding technical hiccups. Some beta participants had trouble advancing beyond the main menu screen. Loadouts occasionally failed to feature selected weapons. Frame rate drops derailed many a play session, as did a troublesome number of camera-related issues. A community lead and producer addressed the problems in separate social media posts, identifying the beta build as a few months old and therefore not a good representation of the targeted final product. 
Producer Ben Wok told Reddit users, the game had since received a significant amount of fixes, tweaks, and improvements. Then noted the build's age couldn't be avoided due to the nature of software development. Despite gaming outlets labeling it a buggy mess, the beta for the futuristic Battlefield entry accumulated more than 7.7 million players. Its early access period, exclusive to pre-order purchasers and EA Play subscribers, amassed over 3.1 million users to become the biggest early access event in the publisher's history. Such successes mattered little when Battlefield 2042 later arrived on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox platforms in a state worse than the beta's roughest moments. Those who bought the Gold and Ultimate Editions, priced at $100 and $120 respectively, received one week early access and made quick note of the game's myriad issues. Dubbed a buggy mess like the beta, Battlefield 2042's final version played host to glitched specialist abilities, glaring visual bugs, data loading errors, and a long laundry list of other shocking technical woes. Well, 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 that was fun. Players cited instances of dead character models standing upright. Hovering in midair for no reason or being randomly thrown across the map became the norm for some. Worst still, many users found themselves in positions where enemies wouldn't succumb to a hail of bullet fire. The Cyberpunk 2077 of 2021 had touched down in the form of an all-new Battlefield adventure. Public reception reflected as much, too. Within days of its launch, Battlefield 2042 landed on a list of Steam's worst-reviewed games ever. Critically, it counted as the lowest-rated game in franchise history. The turbulent rollout even inspired the creation of a playable parody, Clownfield 2042, which miraculously hit Steam to rave user reviews. Performance and graphical bugs were only part, albeit a large part, of a much bigger problem. Veteran Battlefield players expressed their frustrations with the absence of content and the remixing of other features. Community members especially took umbrage with the new specialist characters replacing the classic class system. The user interface didn't hold up against player scrutiny either. The lack of a scoreboard for individual players and teams also ruffled feathers. That DICE and company left out a spectator mode and certain server-related quality of life made the day one version of Battlefield 2042 that much more difficult to rally behind. Me. I need a medic! You me. <sighs> Developers began deploying fixes, balance changes, and fresh content updates shortly after launch, but it hardly proved enough to alleviate the widespread dissatisfaction, and in some cases, the upset went too far, evidenced in the overwhelming toxicity that plagued the Battlefield subreddit. Some of it grew out of grievances leveled at developers because the shooter didn't receive any significant updates during the holidays or immediately thereafter. The strain between the development team and its user base snowballed so badly that community leads threatened to lock the Reddit page in January 2022. Around the same time, a contingent of Steam players opted to vote with their wallets, securing refunds beyond the platform's 14-day policy. The Steam community invested its energy elsewhere, too, as data at one point showed 2042's player counts dipped below that of older entries such as Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5. Well aware of the discontent, DICE took great strides to address player feedback, though it meant postponing previously scheduled releases by several months. In February 2022, developers delayed the Season 1 update slated for the year's first quarter to an early summer window. The goal was to focus production efforts on patching weaker points, introducing modifications based on criticism, and guaranteeing the Season 1 content would be high quality. To the delight of many a fan, the promised work-in-progress features included a much-coveted scoreboard overhaul and all-chat functionality. It didn't take but a few months for DICE to deliver on said promises and roll out other game-changing additions, the most impactful arriving alongside Season 1 Zero Hour. The Season 1 update went live in June bringing with it a brand new map, battle pass, weapons, and a previously unavailable specialist. Despite its minimal additions, Zero Hour marked a major step forward. Much of the Battlefield community agreed that, for the first time since launch, the futuristic FPS title felt fun, enjoyable even. New specialist Evelina Liz wielded an overpowered rocket launcher that required balance adjustments but still injected the experience with a breath of fresh air. 
Zero Hour's stealth helicopter and weapons similarly mixed up the action in exciting ways. Yet the two-level exposure map particularly lifted the spirits of users who'd spent seven months questioning whether the beleaguered game would ever enjoy better days. Set amidst a landslide exposing a secret U.S. military facility, Exposure addressed numerous complaints leveled against the maps preceding it. Tighter spaces gave way to intense combat encounters, and the inventive uses of verticality ensured the firefights never grew too dull. Dedicated players further anticipated changes to the launch locales, whose map designs they pejoratively likened to walking simulators. The primary issue players found on day one was the lengthy travel time required between points of interest on any given map, thanks in no small part to Battlefield 2042's 128 player matches. Agreeing with this consensus, DICE patched the Kaleidoscope map in a late summer update, targeting a smaller setting with improved gameplay flow by moving base spawns and flags closer together. Such advancements rejuvenated the player base, though the rumors circulating during this period suggested EA had entered abandoned ship territory with respect to Battlefield's latest installment. Denying claims that only a skeleton crew would continue pushing out content for the foreseeable future, the publisher said a significant team across studios remained hard at work on evolving and improving Battlefield 2042. These efforts showed throughout subsequent months with the debut of Season 2, 3, and 4 between August 2022 and February 2023. A few hiccups reared their heads every so often, however. For example, weeks before the Season 3 update, DICE removed its limited-time Liquidators event only 30 minutes after launch because of game-breaking progression bugs. The mishap proved there were still growing pains to iron out, but regardless of minor faults here and there, the good in Battlefield 2042 had slowly started outweighing the bad. The January 2023 arrival of Update 3.2 demonstrated that the multiplayer-only Battlefield was rounding the curve of a redemption arc. It most importantly added the traditional class system by organizing specialists into Assault, Engineer, Recon, and Support classes. From the community's perspective, the class-based changes seemed the perfect pairing of systems new and old. What's more, the 3.2 patch coincided with the release of Season 4 in late February, which EA soon thereafter followed up with a PlayStation Plus launch. According to True Trophies, data showed PS Plus boosted 2042's PlayStation user base by over 500%, an impressive feat for an experience that the public widely dismissed just 12 months prior. Even the once toxic online community felt the positive ramifications of game-changing adjustments. The Battlefield 2042 subreddit in particular had turned over a new leaf by March 2023, with player complaints and virulent rhetoric replaced by match highlights level-headed suggestions, and helpful tips. And the addition of classes could only accept partial responsibility. Better maps on top of the slow trickle of Battlefield Portal's old-school weapons into the main game further amplified 2042's profile among series veterans. Yet EA's long-term plan for the property begs the question of how exactly Battlefield 2042, as well as the old guard at DICE, will factor into the future. In December 2021, mere weeks after the title's polarizing debut, reports about a major shakeup of the brand hit the web. The publisher expressed its intent of building a connected Battlefield universe, an ambitious expansion helmed by Call of Duty alum and Respawn Entertainment co-founder Vince Sampella. While 2042 apparently remains central to the strategy, eventual new experiences will boast shared narratives and characters. Halo co-creator Marcus Leto plays an integral part in this branch of the equation, heading up Seattle studio Ridgeline Games to produce a story-driven Battlefield campaign. Some of the IP's well-established creative minds won't participate in these endeavors, though. DICE GM Oscar Gabrielson exited the company at the end of 2021. Ubisoft Annecy's ex-studio director Rebecca Kutaz assumed the GM role, joining several Battlefield veterans to help pave the path forward. What the road ahead entails is anyone's guess, yet it seems Ampella and other higher-ups are especially interested in revisiting what shaped Battlefield at the height of its powers. Speaking with financial news publication Barron's, the franchise's new overseer argued that 2042 strayed a little too far from what Battlefield is. 
Pursuing a bold direction for purposes of growing the player count ultimately distracted from the time needed to iterate on what made this series fun, Zampella noted. Evidently, DICE drew the same conclusions, considering it removed the 128-player breakthrough playlist and provided users with a more tactical 64-player option to befit classic battlefield engagements. These drastic changes and those of a minor scale effectively addressed the call for iteration, and such strides continue to manifest themselves in seasonal updates that may persist for quite a while longer. But no matter how long support for Battlefield 2042 lasts, its legacy will likely remain tainted by the array of unforced errors that beset its first year on the market. Consequently, whatever follows in 2042's stead will have the difficult task of reasserting Battlefield as a force to be reckoned with. Thank you for watching. We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier, Alex Moretti, and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier, Brock Piviroto, Darirap Sigurdsson, GetWrecked.com, Jonathan, Kira May, Landy K. Hayes, Mario Herrera, Milkshake, if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.